So let's have a little chat, shall we? Let's have a little occult chat. This is your host, The Occult View. I know it's been a minute since I made a video. You know, I'm just really, to be honest with you, I am really disgusted and just disinterested with YouTube and social media in general for various reasons. And by the way, we had the eclipse and the world did not end. There was a shift. There was a shift. There was a major shift during, during that eclipse. And based upon your consciousness, you went to the dimension based, upon, you went to another dimension based upon your consciousness. And that's all I'm going to say. So if you're a fucked up individual and you did fucked up shit to people, then all that shit going by, about to start popping off happening to you. You're going to get your just desserts. Okay? The world did not end, but there was a major shift. And we're seeing that play out right now with the whole Israel and Iran thing. And I'm going to get into that a little bit too. I'm going to talk about Israel and Iran and stuff like that. I want, I want to talk a little bit about that. But I've just become disinterested in social media and just YouTube in general. Number one, they won't let you make any money on YouTube. And although I'm not on here specifically for money, but it would be nice if my channel grew a little bit more to at least a thousand subscribers. But YouTube shadow bans, they shadow ban your account if you don't talk about the things they want you to talk about. Or if you're not a predator, YouTube supports predatory people. They actually, at any time we have Jaguar right, and sometimes I agree with some of the things Jaguar says, sometimes I don't. But the majority of stuff that she says, I believe it. No matter if she was part or whatever, I believe it. She did an interview not that long ago where she said that YouTube employed her husband to throw her under the bus, basically. And you know what? I believe it. I believe her. I believe her when she says that. So if YouTube has become this malevolent institution, which it has, it has become so malevolent on YouTube. They allow the worst people to benefit from their website. So why in the fluke would I keep making videos on a regular basis? Why would I? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. You know? And it's not about the money. It's just the principle. It's the principle that people should be able to say what they want to say. And people should be able to, as long as they're not hurting anybody else. But the people that are hurting other people, their channels are monetized. YouTube allows them to make thousands upon thousands of dollars. Just like recently, I believe Tasha K did an interview with Bobby Brown's sister, not Leola Brown. I like Leola, but he has another sister. And I don't know where Leola Brown is because I've been waiting for her to come out and talk about this. I've been checking her channel to find out what's the tea. What's, what, what's up, uh, Leola? What's up, Miss Leola? Because I've been wanting her to come through and respond to these allegations that the other sister made against Bobby Brown. If y'all, I'm not going to say it on my channel. I'm not going to say it, but go and listen to that clip on Tasha Kay's channel where she interviewed Bobby Brown's sister and listen to what she said. It's only a small clip. If you want to see the full interview, you have to, um, I think you have to um, subscribe to Tasha K's app and pay a monthly fee. So go to Tasha K's channel, look up that clip. If I feel like it, I might put it in the description box only so people can hear it because I don't want to say it. But there are some serious allegations involving S.A. and graping, graping. OK, and that's all I'm going to say on that.
it's a lot of stuff that's going on that just doesn't really make sense to me. And I just, that's basically how I want to, you know, just, you know, I want the theme of this video to be about that. I saw an interview recently with um, Bernadette Stannis. For those who don't know who Bernadette Stannis is, she played Thelma on Good Times. She was the sister, Thelma, the pretty one. And you know this world is coming to an end when people are attacking Bernadette Stannis. And I would, she did a TMZ interview. And I don't think she knows the energy of TMZ. TMZ is gossip, gossipy gossip. Low key, I mean, not low key, but low, low, low gossip. And Bernadette Stannis is of a certain echelon who played Thelma. That is why the character of Thelma was so, um, she was beautiful, she was intelligent, and she had a lot of class. I don't know why she decided to do T to go the TMZ route, because when I was reading the comments under that short little clip that I saw, you know, people were giving her praise mostly, but there were some people talking about oh, she looked old and all that. The woman is 70 years old. And I'm assuming it was a man that made that comment because he had an avatar of old dirty bastard, the rapper that died years ago. I think he died in 2006. He, she, okay, the, 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 the commenter, said she looks old. I don't know why people are making, uh, uh, I don't know why people, um, what did he say? She looks old. People on here lying to this woman, telling, saying that she looks, you know, she looks good. Well, let's see how you look when you get to be 70, if you make it there. Because I hate to say it, most of you black men, you ain't making it to 70. Most of us don't make it to 70. Just, just, just honestly. So let's see if you make it to 70, Negro. Let's see if you make it there. I'm not disrespecting him, but I'm just saying she has had no plastic surgery. She's an aging woman. But anyway, she was talking about the Good Times cartoon that's coming out on Netflix. And there's a lot of controversy surrounding that cartoon coming out. It's an animated version of Good Times. And I don't, I, I think the only character that's not in it is Esther Roll, and that's because she's deceased. Janae Dubois, who played Walona, she's also deceased. And a lot of people don't like the fact that that cartoon or that animation of Good Times is coming out on Netflix. But I have a question. Norman Lear. The creator, I think he's, well, no, he wasn't the creator. He was one of the executive producers of Good Times. Norman Lear is dead. Didn't he die? Let me, let me, let me double check. Let me double check, child. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. Let me look. Oh, wait a minute. Let me, let me, oh, let me save this to watch later, child, because there's some, there's some stuff I see. Some drama going on with, with basketball-wise, but that's another story. Um, what was I doing? Okay. Google, is Norman Lear dead or alive? According to The Guardian, Norman Lear, who has died aged 101, was the writer and producer of a series of hit shows, including All in the Family. Okay, he died at 101. So the interview that TMZ showed of Bernadette Stannis, that was done last year. Okay, I'm, I'm assuming it was done last year because it was posted a few days ago or not that long ago. Now, maybe, no, no. All, in all fairness, maybe TMZ, maybe that's something that they do. I don't know the, the mechanism and the working mechanism of how TMZ 
you know, post their videos or the frequency or the time frame. I don't know anything about that. But what I do know is that they posted that video of that interview not that long ago, and it's being passed off like it was recent because Bernadette status is still referring to Norman Lear as being alive. So what's up with that? See, these are all of the mind games that Hollywood and social media likes to play with the dumbed down public. Right? This past Saturday, Iran decided to launch an attack against Israel. And I found it simply by accident on YouTube. My mouth was on the floor. And it took me back to the 90s and to the early 2000s and it gave me that, the energy gave me that vibe of early 90s when the United States went to war with Iraq the first time, Desert Storm, and Operation, um, what do they call it, um, Shock and Awe against Iraq again in 2003. Because I remember during the first Gulf War, Saddam Hussein was launching Scud missile attacks against Tel Aviv on a daily basis, and we saw it on TV, we were horrified, right? We were horrified, and we felt for the Israeli people. Now, a little bit of a backstory. Iran and Israel have been beefing for 50 years, from what I understand, maybe even longer than that. But, but from what I understand, you know, ground base, it's, they've been beefing for 50 years, at least. So, what caused this recent conflict is Israel attacked an, an Iranian consulate in Damascus, Syria. And they killed a lot of high-ranking military officials within the Iranian military. And Iran vowed they were going to get Israel back for that, right? So they just, now the, the consulate, the Israeli attack on their consulate, from what I understand, that took place the beginning of April, I believe, somewhere in the beginning of April. And Iran said, we're going to get you back. We're going to get your asses back for that motherfucking shit. You know, now what I don't understand is this, and I'm not trying to make this about politics. So I don't want no political people coming here trying to check me or none of that bullshit. I'm just asking questions. OK, I'm just asking questions. I am not a fan of Iran and I am not a fan of Israel either. I have nothing against, you know, the people there that are not whatever. I'm not a fan of either groups because both groups have been proven to be very racist towards black people. Arabs are very racist towards black people and so are Israelis. Because I know black people who actually lived in Israel and they told me as a black woman, as a matter of fact, who spoke on Brother Panic's platform a long time ago. And she talked, she wrote a book about it. And she talked about how she was, how she experienced so much racism in Israel and how an Israeli woman spit on her and called her a nigger. So I'm not a fan of Israel either. They don't like black folks over there. They don't like black folks over there in the land of, of, of Jesus. That's the energy that's over there. Even though word on the curb is they're not even the real Israelites. Huh? Word on the curb is they're not even the real fucking Israelites. But I'm not trying to start no race war. I'm just pointing things out that I've heard through and seen through research. And even Vladimir Putin opened up some shit up there in Russia that kind of confirms that. But that's another story. I, I ain't, that ain't my battle, okay? My thing is this. Iran responds to the consulate attack. And when I'm looking at, the, I'm, I'm, look, I'm hearing the air raid sirens going off over Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, but mainly Jerusalem. 
And that is when my mouth was on the floor. I was like, they had the gall to attack Jerusalem? Even Saddam Hussein didn't attack Jerusalem. Child, they attacked Bethlehem too. They attacked Jerusalem and Bethlehem. But whatever weapons they were using, they looked like fireworks. And a lot of it dissolved in the sky before they hit any targets. So, and, and, and I'm not trying to be insensitive to the people that were there that actually experienced any type of trauma from that, but looking at it on the television, it looked like something AI generated. That's what it looked like. It didn't look real to me. It looked more like a fireworks show. And now, Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, who I heard, what I'm hearing, they, the people over there want him gone. They want him out of, uh, out of office. They don't like how he's running the country. So now, Israel is deciding how or if they're going to retaliate. Now, answer me this. When have you known Israel to be slow to retaliate against someone who attacks them? Because I'm going to tell you something. One thing about Israel, they don't motherfucking play. I will give them that much. When you go after them, they tear your motherfucking ass up. Now, I don't agree with Israel attacking that consulate in Syria, but they attacked the consulate they did not attack Iran within it. They didn't attack the country. They attacked the consulate. But Iran decided to attack Jerusalem and Bethlehem, which are holy cities, according to them. They attacked Jerusalem and Bethlehem. They hit Israeli soil. Israel did not attack Iranian soil. They really attacked Syrian soil. And they're being very slow to respond. Now, some people may say because they're, coordin they're coordinating on how they're going to retaliate and because they're getting a lot of international pressure from the United States and from other nations on how they should respond because the United States told them, if y'all go in there, y'all gonna go in there alone. We're not, we're not participating in that. And that's because the United States is weak now. The United States is weak. Joe Biden is a weak president. And although I'm not a quote unquote Trump fan like that, although I'm not a quote unquote Trump fan, Look, and, I, and I'm not saying I want him back in office. I'm not a political person, but looking at it with a spiritual eye, Trump would not have allowed that to go down. And I believe that within my strongest opinion. And then you got the U.S. government trying to ban people from having side hustles now. Like, get the fuck out of here. And we don't think all of this shit is connected. They send Israel billions of dollars in aid Every fucking day, not no every fucking year, every motherfucking day, they're sending billions of dollars of aid to Israel while while Americans suffer. You go into the grocery store, you buy five things, your bill is a hundred motherfucking dollars. But we're sending money to Ukraine. We're sending money to Israel. We're sending money to this place and that place. And while all of these people were over here distracted with the eclipse and all of their fear mongering surrounding the eclipse, all of this shit is going on in the world right here. Because in my personal opinion, I think that attack on Israel happened a while back while people were distracted with the eclipse. While people were shifting into their respective appropriate realities during the eclipse. So what's really going on? 
You got Bernadette Stannis saying that talking as if Norman Lear is still alive and TMZ is not saying, oh, this is an old interview. I had to figure that out on my own, that this is possibly an older interview. You got Iran attacking Israel. What else is going on? I, I just, you know, I just have a lot of, of, of questions. And this really explains so much as to why the world is so angry. I saw a clip of what, what looks like, I guess, to be a Jewish woman. She looks Mexican to me, but she says she was a Jewish woman. And she had the flag of Israel on her back. And she was cursing out Muslims who were in Israel. She was cursing them out, telling them to get the fuck out of her country. They don't want no Muslims in their country. Now, I'm not a book, I'm not a big fan of Islam of Islamic people or Muslims in general either. I'm not a big fan of theirs. Not because I don't like them because they're Islamic. I don't like their beliefs and I, and I don't like how they get down. I don't like how they get down. And some of the things, especially that they do to women and children. And especially and, and, and how they treat gay people and how they treat black people. Because Islamic people are just, I mean, especially the Arabian ones or the Arabic ones, they're just as racist. And for people who watch me that may be of that energy, if you're watching me, I'm not talking to you. And as you know, I talk about everybody. I talk about everyone. So don't take it personal. I'm not attacking you as an individual person. I'm attacking ideologies because I talk about other black people too. So let's not let, let's just be clear about that. Nobody is off limits. I'm a gay man and I talk about other gay people too. Especially when 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 something is not adding up. You feel what I'm saying? But this Ju this Jewish woman was telling the Muslim people or the Muslims that were standing around, "Get out of our country." She was very nasty and very discriminatory. And for all intent and purposes, those Islamic people probably weren't even, they weren't doing anything. They were probably protesting their right to exist in, in, in Israel or Palestine like she, like she was. Like I said, she looks Mexican. She didn't even look the, 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 the part of a, what I thought Jewish people looked like back in the day. But maybe she was, but she looked Mexican. Nothing against Mexicans, I'm just saying. And and Jew being a Jewish person, it's a religion anyway. So, but I'm just looking at how angry and bitter the world has become. And it really explains why people are such, I'm going to say such predators nowadays. Y'all think it's just P. Diddy and people in Hollywood? It's your next door neighbors who ain't got no fucking money. Who are broke back, struggle back niggas and bitches. Whether they black, white, orange, blue, uh, uh, Spanish. Uh, uh, it's, 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 it's everyone. Not everyone, but you know what I'm saying. Anyone has the potential to be a predator. And what I have noticed especially in the black community. Let me bring it back to the black community. That's safer grounds because that, that's what I am. What I have noticed in the black community, the black community has become very predatory. And I don't care who don't like what I'm saying. The black community has become very predatory. But then again, the black community has always been discriminatory and predatory towards other black people. They always have been. That's never been any, um, that, that, that's not anything new. But it's turned into a bunch of no compassion having, no emotion having, all about self, 
No thought process. Everything is about self. And me, me, me. It feels like the 80s again. But even in the 80s, people had some sense of community. And when I say community, I mean having respect for your fellow neighbor, having respect for your, you know, your fellow family members, having respect for people in general. And we have lost that in our culture. It doesn't matter if you're black, it doesn't matter if you're white, it doesn't matter what race you are. All this compart all this compartmentalization of racial groups, oh, this racial group does this. This all races have the capacity to be fucked up. Black people, white people, Spanish people, Arab people, every group has the capacity to be fucked up. It's just that everybody thinks they can take a shot at black people, especially black women think, I'm sorry, especially they think they can take a shot at black women all the motherfucking time. That is why I say I believe what Jaguar Wright said when she said that YouTube hired her husband to fuck her over. I believe it. Isn't that what the government did to Billie Holiday's husband? Isn't that what the government did to Billie Holiday's husband? Go look at that movie, The United States versus Billie Holiday. And the only reason they got mad at Billie Holiday, and I don't care what nobody, I don't give a fuck what Billie Holiday did in her personal life. She was, she was a flawed individual, but she was also, she was, she may have been flawed, but she was also the image of perfection. You know why she was the image of perfection? Because she showed with her flaws. And she didn't give a fuck who didn't like it. Th they stalked that woman. They put people in place to take that woman out. See, this is why YouTube will not get me or allow me to grow my channel because I talk like this. This is why. They want people to bring people on their panels to lie, stalk, and be predators. The only time I become a predator is towards an enemy. And I'll be the werewolf waiting for you, walking to grandmother's house like Little Red Riding Hood. And I'll be the wolf. See, I'm not going to be in the bed, in, in the grandmother's bed, pretending to be the grandmother. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be hiding behind the trees. And when I see you off guard walking to the grandma's house, thinking that everything is okay, that's when I'm going to come at you. Has to be a full moon, though, child. But that's only towards enemies and people who've done something to me. Let me be clear about that. I don't believe in turning the other cheek. I don't believe in forgiving and forgetting. That's not me. That's not me. That's weakness. Now, in some cases, depending on the situation, if it's somebody that I really like and really admire and we can work things out, that's something different. And I mean like your, your man, like my, like my man, my partner, whatever, who lives with me or a family member that I like, that's different. But just some old strange struggle back ass motherfucking nigga or bitch, fuck no. No. And I forgot where I was going with this child. Y'all know I go for my tangents, child, but I ain't done one of these in a long time. They, they not even talking about the earthquakes that happened no more, are they? They ain't talking about that no more, right? Everybody was so on edge about the eclipse, all of the hysterics. Oh, it's the end of the world. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. And you know what? But, but I, well, something did happen, but it was of a spiritual nature. And I'm not talking about biblical. I'm not talking about the Bible. I'm not talking about the Bible, y'all. No, I ain't talking about that. Mm-mm. I'm talking about something that's beyond the Bible. I'm talking about true spirituality and true nature. The true nature of who we are. Something happened during that eclipse. There was a shift. And for some people, it was a good shift. And for others, it was a bad one. 
the ones who were paranoid, scared, and fear-mongering, they shifted into a worse place. They don't see it spiritually, but I do. I sense it. I see it. The ones who had more of a pure heart, such as myself, we shifted into a better place because I'm going to tell you something. After that eclipse, let me tell you what happened in my reality. After the eclipse. After the eclipse, my neighbors and I, we all sat around and talked. Nobody was on their phones. There were no TVs. We all sat around and talked after people came in from outside. We all just sat around and talked on our porches or in whatever you want to call it. We just sat around and talked. We had a good time. We enjoyed each other. We laughed. We talked about the neighborhood gossip. It felt like back in the 1980s when people before cell phones and all of that, I mean, cell phones were out in the 80s as well, but they weren't, you know, they weren't the general rule. You had to have money to have a cell phone and they were real big and thick at that time. They damn near looked like a goddamn uh, shit. I can't describe what it looked like, but they were real big. It damn near looked like a damn uh, 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 a half of a laptop back then. But we just talked and we had a good time. The energy was very positive. It was very positive and light and pure. There were no heavy emotions. There were no heavy emotions. And I said, oh my damn. Oh my motherfucking God, oh my damn. I said, so I get it. The reason people were trying to instill so much fear within this eclipse was because they wanted people to be distracted, confused, and in chaos so we could not shift to a higher vibration. And from where I was sitting, after that eclipse, we were all sitting around like we were in our own world and in our own dimension. People, we were laughing, we were talking. Sorry for the noise, you all. They're renovating. <laughs> I'm sorry. They're renovating in here, so I'm sorry about that. Um, if you heard that bump. But it was a very beautiful experience. There was no panic. There was no fear. We just all enjoyed each other. Even the people that really did not get along on in most circumstances, we were just enjoying each other, having conversations, enjoying each other's energy and company. That is what we were doing after the eclipse. But the hysterics, the fear mongers, the people who put out misinformation, they went back to fear. They went back to dread. They went back to oppression. They went back to all of those things. That is what they went back to. But that's because they didn't have a pure heart anyway. So the spiritual, defi not the definition, but the spiritual meaning of that eclipse was different for each person. It was a shift. It was a shift, definitely. But depending on your consciousness and your heart, Depending upon those things, you shift it based upon that. For me, it was a beautiful experience. Not the physical eclipse, but
but the spiritual symbolism behind it. Because I look at it like this. It was something to usher in something different, usher in something new. That's how I looked at it. A new beginning, a new era. Now, are you going to continue with your fear mongering and hatred and anger? People are so angry now, they can't even have sex the right way. They can't even have sex the right way because they're so busy being led by the P. Diddy effect, by the Harvey Weinstein effect, by the Nickelodeon effect, being predators. And those type of people have shifted into their own reality. See, that what happened to P. Diddy was a prelude or a precursor. See, I pay attention to the things that happened before the eclipse as well, because everything is a spiritual symbolism, at least in my opinion. Everything has a spiritual significance behind it. It's not just about the raid. It's about where this person is shifted. Now, answer me a question. Where is Puff Daddy now? He has disappeared. He's disappeared. Where is he? He ain't up under my bed. I don't fuck with niggas that look like him. He's ugly. He too ugly for me and he look like his breath stink, if you ask me, but that's just my personal opinion, child. Me being a messy gay guy sometimes. That that ain't something that I I I I would I would want. He couldn't even pay me, I don't think. Well, depending on the price <laughs> and depending on what he wanted to do. He could pay me to counsel him spiritually and get him straight. If I was spiritually counseling Jaguar Wright, I would have told her never to do that, that Tasha K video. I mean, interview. I would have told her to never do it. I would have advised her to never do it. I would have advised her to not do that because that was really beneath her. Jaguar Wright speaks truth. No matter where it comes from, she speaks the truth. And she is showing us the type of angry, degenerate world that we really live in. And because people are so obsessed with Hollywood, they follow that doctrine. Average people follow that doctrine, unfortunately. You wonder why you're having issues in your relationship and shit? That's because a lot of these men, some of these women too, they followed that doctrine. They followed the Hollywood doctrine, even though a lot of them ain't got, they ain't even got the money the people got in Hollywood. But they want to follow that doctrine. That means they want somebody that has plastic faces, tummy tucks, plastic breast, BBLs, Botox injections. And then they shame you for aging like they did Bernadette Stannis. Because the world is an angry place. People are very angry. And some people have a reason to be angry. But it's unproductive because they're not doing anything about it. They're just taking their frustrations out on random people. People that haven't done anything to them. Going back to the eclipse for a moment, the same type of energy and people who said that in 2008, and I always bring this up and I'm going to keep bringing it up. It's the same people who said 15, 16 years ago that George W. Bush was going to declare martial law and put people in concentration camps. And he was going to cancel the 2008 elections. 
never happened. It never happened. I'm going to tell you all something else, too. And this may sound a little kabuki and out there, but, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm crazy, child. So y'all know I'm, I'm, a, I'm crazy. So whatever. I'm a crazy faggot. Whatever. That'll suffice. Um, they thought, people thought, my enemies thought that when Christopher Berry died untimely and unjustly, they, because I, they, they, I believe they took, they ain't no belief. They took Christopher out. It's not a belief. They took him out. And they thought that that would break me. And it almost did. It almost did. Oh, we'll take out his lover. We'll take him out. His friend that he just made. Oh, yeah, those are two soulmate connections. Oh, yeah, we're going to, we'll take him, we'll take him out. They thought that that was going to break me. He's broken now, but bitches, I'm still here. It almost did break me, though. It, it, it almost did. And it made me angry that I couldn't talk to him anymore. Because no man, not even the one that's living with me now, and I can say this honestly, no man will ever touch my heart the way that Christopher did. No man will ever touch me that way. And I was so angry for so many years that he was gone and I could not, you know, have a relationship with that. I couldn't touch him and see him and and talk to him. But we have a different type of relationship now. And that's and, and I can deal with that. But they thought that would break me. And it's so interesting that it happened. At a time in my life when I was at a crossroads. I was up under the vibration of the number nine. I was at a crossroads. I was 36 years old, getting ready to go into a new beginning. And they thought that that would break me. But, but the universe, spirit, God, whatever you want to call it, said, no, 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 no. No, 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 that's not going to break you. That's not going to break you. This is a rebirth. This is a rebirth for you. So that's why I did, it, 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 it broke me for a little while. It took me many, I'm just, within the past few years, I'm just getting back to myself after that. Just getting back to myself. You know what I'm saying? It, you know, from 2016 to 2020 were some very, very trying times for me. It really was. You know, but that's the story of my life. I came down here to deal with these heavier emotions. That's part of my spiritual journey so I can transmute them. And what I want people to know is that Anything that you go through, anything that you go through in life, as long as you still have breath in your body and as long as you're not getting ready to transition or anything like that, as long as you still have breath in your body, there's still hope. There is still hope for you to do what you want to do. It is. Even when it seems bleak. Because, see, what people like to do is they like to catch you at weak places, especially especially enemies and especially ones that show up as friends. Those are the ones you got to really watch out for. And this is one of the reasons why I don't have a lot of friends, because a lot of times people want to get next to you just so they can undermine you. And I have noticed that, especially with a lot of black men and black women in general, too. Black people in general, they want to get next to you so they can undermine you because they're so angry and bitter and struggle back that they can't do the things that they want to do. So they'll see that you are calm 
you know, person. You're not, you're not into them arguing. That you're just a calm, cool person, and that drives them insane. And they will try to insert themselves in your life simply so they can destroy you. But that's the type of angry world that we live in. That's the world that we live in. I had to turn my fan on. It's kind of hot. We see it in all races, but we black folks. So we know what's up. We live in an angry world. And the anger is unproductive. It's unproductive. You hear black people all the time talking about, oh, white people are so racist. Everybody hates us. What's the point in sitting around at the dinner table talking about white people are racist and white people are such horrible, you know, um, unjust people when you just sat up, backstabbed, ridiculed, humiliated, degraded your so-called black brethren or sister but you sitting up talking about how horrible white people are towards black people. Make it make motherfucking sense. Make it make sense. That's how I know the world is crazy. That's how I know the world is angry and predatory in general. So what happened during that eclipse Everybody shifted to their respective realities. Everyone shifted to their respective realities. And if vultures try to get into your reality, you stop them. You stop them at the portal. You stop them at the portal. You don't let them in. And usually the signs are them trying to be overly friendly with you or too friendly with you or trying to force friendship on you or force communication on you. Or if they're looking at you all funny because you don't say anything to them. Like this, like this nigga that live in my neighborhood. I made a video about him. Darrell. A 50 some year old bum. Always looking all up in my face. I don't say nothing to that motherfucking nigga because I know he's problematic. I don't want you in my reality. I don't want to be friends with you. You got a girlfriend. You're supposed to be straight. Then your girlfriend lives in this neighborhood. I like his girlfriend. Even though, you know, she's cool. Or his friend or whatever the situation may be. But I don't fuck with him because I know he's problematic. And people like that will make you come out of your reality and back down to their low level. And I don't want to do that. So I don't say nothing to him. He always looking all up in my face. The fuck you looking at me for? I don't have nothing for you. Number one, you're physically unappealing. You're mentally unappealing. And you don't even bathe. Well, actually, him and him. Well, actually, well, that's another story. I ain't going to say that about her. Because I like her, but, you know. He is a prime example of what I'm talking about, how angry the world is. I can tell he's very angry and he's looking for someone to vent and rage at and ra I'm sorry, vent to somebody he can direct that rage at. And you're not going to do that to me. No way, no how. How the fuck you 50 some years old? Lost your job at the airport. This motherfucker just got out of jail, was living on the fucking streets, got a job at the airport, lost the fucking job. Now you got to live between your, I guess, your girlfriend, because his, his ex-girlfriend put him out. He got a bunch of kids all over the place that he probably don't even take care of. But you walking around looking to see who you can devour. You can't devour me because I am the devourer. I'm the soul eater. 
You can't devour me. And see, I'm not going to go back and forth with him. I'm going to just take it to my altar. If it came to that, I'm going to take it to the altar, y'all. That's what I do. I don't argue with these motherfucking niggas. I take it to the altar. Then down the line, you find out, oh, he didn't have a stroke. Did you know that? Oh, no, I didn't know that. Oh, who was he fucking with and bothering? Oh, did y'all know she, something happened to her? Who was she bothering? Who was she fucking with? You see what I'm saying? Don't be looking up in my face. I don't have anything for you. But this is what angry, predatory people do in the world. This is what they do. This is what they do when they 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 looking for people that they can devour. When you got the wrong one, I ain't the one. I'm not the one. And I'm not saying that I'm the baddest and I'm not saying it can't nothing happen to me. I, I, I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm not the baddest. There are people that are badder than me. As a matter of fact, one of them live over in the UK that I know. A young brother. He's a cancer. He's my play little brother. He's much younger than me. And he's badder than me. And I wouldn't cross him for all the tea in China. He got them old, he got them old ancient Barbadian, Barbadian are roots. And when I say roots, I mean um ancestry. Powerful roots. You never underestimate people. And I tell people that shit all the time. You don't underestimate people. You don't do that. You never know who a person is or where they're coming from. You never do. So I'm not I'm not saying I'm the baddest. I'm not saying I'm the baddest. I'm bad, but I ain't the baddest. And sometimes you have to get comfortable. Let me say this before I leave. Sometimes you have to get comfortable with people simply not liking you. I've always been comfortable. It may hurt a little bit sometimes, but you have to get comfortable with people being uncomfortable around you because what's making them uncomfortable around you is the light frequency that emanates from you. They can't take you. That is why they're uncomfortable around you. That is why you got motherfuckers like that bum derail looking all up in your face. Trying to figure you out. Nigga, you don't need to figure me out. You need to figure out what, how you gonna get a job. That's what you need to figure out. You need to figure out how you're going to be a better father and role model to your children. That's what you need to figure out, you bum. That's what you need to figure out. I don't have any children. I don't have those types of responsibilities. But instead, men like him would rather use women. And unfortunately, the woman that's his friend now she don't even see that she's being used. Because you know what he's doing? The people in the, the women in the neighborhood that she don't like, he, one particular woman, actually, the same crackhead that I cussed out, I told y'all about, he's friends with that crackhead woman. He drives that one, the crackhead got a car. Now, he drives her car, and he's been seen in the car with her, knowing that the woman that he lives with does not like that lady. But you still got an association with her. This is what these types of people do. Betrayal, backstabbing, no conscience, no guidance, like Chris Brown said. Anyway, that's my little video for today. Please rate, subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.